plants get water. Hi, my name is Kaylee. Thanks so much for tuning into my Blue Studios class today. What do you do when you get thirsty and need water? Maybe you go to the fridge to get a glass of cold water. Or maybe you have a water bottle on your desk. Just like you and me, plants need water too. And they get water in many different ways. Let's take a deep dive into the topics of water and how plants get and use water. More than half of your body weight comes from water. In fact, around 70% of your body weight is made up of water. Water doesn't have a taste, calories, or nutrients, but with so much water in your body, it must be important. And let me tell you, it is. Water is also known as H2O. It is very important to all life on Earth. You, me, and all the plants and animals need water to survive. Water has many forms. It is all around us, even if you can't see it. It can be found as rain, ice, and fog. It can change from a liquid to a solid to gas form through something called the water cycle. The water cycle refers to how water moves within our planet and atmosphere. It is a large and complex process, but let's break it down in four simple stages. Stage one is called evaporation. This is when heat from the sun turns the water in the oceans, lakes, and rivers into water vapor. Water vapor is the gas form of water. Stage two is called transpiration. This is when water vapor rises up and enters into the atmosphere. Stage three is called condensation. As water vapor goes higher and higher above us, the cold air of the atmosphere turns back into liquid water. This is where clouds come from. Stage four is called precipitation. You might know this stage when you go outside and it's raining and you don't have an umbrella. When a cloud is filled with liquid water, it comes back down to the ground as rain or snow. This liquid water fills up the oceans, lakes, and rivers. Then the cycle starts all over again. If water is all around us in different forms, and there are many ways to get water, how do plants get water? Plants can get water in three ways, through their roots, stems, and leaves. However, plants tend to not use their stems and leaves to get water. Neither of them is an efficient way to get water because most of the time, water evaporates from the surface of the stem or leaf before the plant can absorb it. Most of the water duty goes to the roots. Plant roots are essential to a healthy growing plant. A typical root system will grow from the base of the plant and stretch outward in many directions underground. There are three main components of the root system. The first is the main stem. This is the thickest and oldest part of the root system. It's like the foundation for all other parts of the root system. The second is the lateral or secondary roots. These roots branch away from the main stem. The third is the tertiary roots, also known as the root hairs. These root hairs are delicate and much thinner than other roots. They branch off the lateral or secondary roots in thick groups. Root hairs are so important to the plant because they increase the space underground that the plant can get water and nutrients from. The more surface area the roots can cover, the more water and nutrients the plants can get. As roots grow, they add new cells to their tips. At the tip of each root is a root cap. A root cap is stronger than the rest of the root tip and for a good reason. 
The main job of the root cap is to push through dirt, sand, and soil to look for water and nutrients. It protects the new cells that grow at the tip and help the root become longer. The tertiary roots, also known as root hairs, have very unique cells. The membranes of their cells are semi-permeable. Let's break this word down. Semi means half or partially, but not all. Permeable is an adjective that describes how a material lets liquids or gases pass through it. Semi-permeable means that the material will let specific things pass through it, but not everything. A semi-permeable membrane is the root cause of water uptake in plants. Water can enter the cells of the root hairs by a process called osmosis. Osmosis refers to the process by which water passes through a semi-permeable membrane from an area where there's lots of water to an area where there's not so much water. As water enters the cells of the root hairs using osmosis, the number of water molecules in the cells increases. All these water molecules need a place to go, and they move around and push against the cell walls. This is called root pressure. As the cells absorb more water, the pressure inside the cells increases. So how do plant cells not burst from all of that water? Xylem and phloem are the two transport tissues in plants. Think of them as tunnels inside the plant. They move water and nutrients from the ground into other areas of the plant. While phloem allows sugars made by photosynthesis to move around the plant, it's the xylem tunnels that allows the movement of water from the roots to the leaves and stems. The xylem runs upward through the main stem into the branches and leaves of the plants. Now let's bring it all together. Remember that as the root hairs absorb water from the ground, there are more and more water molecules in the root hair cells. As the number of water molecules goes up, so does the pressure inside the cell walls because there's so many more water molecules crammed into a small space. To prevent the cell walls from bursting from the pressure, the water is pushed up the xylem tunnels. The xylem allows water to reach even the topmost part of the plant. When the water reaches the surface of the leaves, it evaporates from the surface, meaning there are fewer water molecules in the leaves. Recall that in osmosis, molecules move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. When there are not many water molecules in the leaves, osmosis and the xylem work together to push and pull water toward the leaves. Now think about how much you've learned. Now you know a little bit more about water, why it's important, and how plants get and use it. Every plant from the smallest dandelion to the largest tree needs water and uses the processes that we've discussed today. So the next time you see a plant just doing its thing on a sunny or rainy day, know that there's a lot more going on underneath the surface. See you later. We are thrilled that you're watching Blue Studios 24-7. We're so excited to bring round-the-clock entertainment and educational content to your home. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. At Blue Studios, we aspire to revolutionize the way families spend time together. We empower families by providing them with tools to work together, earn and learn, and achieve new heights of success. Visit www.bluestudios.io to discover more about our mission and how we empower families to succeed. Thank you so much for being part of our community. Keep watching and learning with us. 
and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.